Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I recently reached a thousand subscribers on my channel. So I want to thank all of you for your dedication and for continuing to view my videos. Uh, it's really been a lot of fun. Uh, there's a couple of things I've been thinking about doing um, new. So I'm going to post another video on that later. Uh, but for now, I wanted to show you a really cool problem from the All Russian Math Olympiad in 2013. So I did this on a previous live stream video, but we weren't able to solve it. But eventually I finally figured it out and I feel like it's a really nice problem. Uh, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So we let omega be the inner circle of a triangle ABC with center I. So I drew an obtuse triangle ABC in this case. Uh, let gamma be the circumcircle of triangle AIB. And let Z, uh, or, or I should say, the circles omega and gamma intersect at points X and Y. And we let Z be the intersection of the common tangents of omega and the circle gamma through AI and B. And we want to show that the circumcircle of triangle XYZ and ABC are tangent. All right, so this was a very tricky problem. Um, so first, I'm going to start off with an observation. So by the in-center, x-center lemma, we know that the midpoint of arc AB is the circumcenter of the triangle AIB. So I'm going to draw the midpoint of arc AB. I'm going to call it M. Okay, I've written that there. And so just writing out what I just said, by the in-center, x-center lemma, M is the center of this circle through AI and B. All right, I've done that many times on my channel. And by symmetry, it's not hard to see that C, Z, I, and M all have to be collinear. Um, so first we have that C, I, and M are collinear um, because C, M, or C, I is an angle bisector of angle A, C, B. And by symmetry, Z, I, and M also have to be collinear because Z um, is the intersection of the tangents of those two circles, and so it has to be collinear with their center. So we have C, Z, I, and M are all collinear. All right, so for the next step, I'm gonna notice something. So I defined H and J uh, to be the intersection of the tangents uh, with A, C, and B, C to the end circle. Uh, so it's clear that C, H, I, J has to be cyclic since angle C, H, I is 90 and angle C, J, I is 90, okay. So I'm going to write this out. So since angle CHI is CJI is 90, CHIJ is cyclic, so we can draw that circle. And I'm going to let it intersect the circumcircle of ABC at a point, uh, which I'm going to call K. So this is actually the Sharky Devil point. If you've seen my video uh, number 104 on the Sharky Devil configuration, uh, it has this uh, same configuration. And it's not clear yet why I did this. Um, but I actually claim that um, K is the point of tangency of the two circles in question. So I claim that uh, not only are the circumcircles of X, Y, Z, and A, B, C tangent, I claim that they're tangent at point K. So if I want to show that, uh, the first step would be to show that K actually lies on the circumcircle of X, Y, Z. So we want to show that ZKXY is cyclic, in other words. And I'm going to try to do that using the power ratio lemma. So uh, what that means is, so X, y, X and Y are the intersection points of the circles omega and the circumcircle uh, through AI and B. Um, if I can show that the ratio of the power of Z with respect to those two circles is the same as the ratio of the power of k with respect to those two circles, then that would show that k, z, y, x is cyclic. So just the, probably maybe like two months ago, the power ratio lemma was a really new theorem to me, but now I just see it applied all the time in all sorts of different problems. So this is gonna be my approach. So I'm gonna to wanna to show that k, z, y, x is cyclic using the power ratio lemma. And then I'm going to want to show that the two circles are actually tangent at point K. So this was actually the same idea um, on the Art of Problem Solving Forum. There were many different solutions to this problem. 
uh, my solution is very similar to the one posted by Anand Tamudgal. So he's the one that created IMO 2019 number six, a uh, famous geometry problem, and he's also a viewer of my channel. All right, so I'm gonna get started on trying to use the power ratio lemma. So first, uh, before I get into that, um, note that uh, K um, is actually the center of a spiral similarity taking triangle KHJ to triangle KAB. Um, that's because K, it's the intersection of the circumcircles of uh, CHJ and CAB. So by properties of spiral similarities, that means KHJ is similar to KAB, and there's a spiral similarity centered at K taking one to the other. So I'm gonna write this out. So since AJ, or since AH and BJ meet at point C, um, if you take the intersection of the circumcircles of ABC and HJC, which is K, uh, that means there's a spiral similarity centered at K, uh, taking one of those triangles to the other. And not only that, so that spiral similarity, it takes uh, the whole circle uh, C -H -I -J, C -K -H -I -J to C -K -A -M -B. Um, So it takes those circles to one another. And since I is the midpoint of arc HJ and M is the midpoint of arc AB, it has to actually take the whole quadrilateral K -H -I -J to K -A -M -B. All right, so I'm gonna write that out. So since I is the midpoint of arc HJ, M is the midpoint of arc AB, that means the spiral similarity takes KHIJ to KAMB. And that gives us a couple ratios we can work with, which I'm gonna eventually show you how we can use them to apply the power ratio lemma. So since these quadrilaterals are similar, um, corresponding sides have to be in the same ratio. So it means that KI over KM uh, is equal to IH over MA. Those correspond to one another. And then we can square both sides of this. So I'll show you why we do this fairly soon. So we have KI squared over KM squared is IH squared over MA squared. And if these two ratios are equal, uh, then if we subtract the numerators and subtract the denominators, it's still equal. So this is equal to KI squared minus IH squared over KM squared minus MA squared. And believe it or not, these two are actually powers of K with respect to both circles. So KI squared minus IH squared. So KI is the distance from K to the center of omega and IH is the radius. So that's a power of K with respect to omega. And KM squared minus MA squared, uh, by the same reason, that's the power of K uh, with respect to the circle through AI and B. Um, because KM is the distance to the center and MA is the radius of the circle. So this is the ratio of the power of K with respect to those two circles. So we're getting close to being able to apply the power ratio lemma. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same idea, but with point Z, I'm gonna try to take the ratio of the powers of point Z with respect to those two circles. Um, so one thing I wanted to note um, before I do that, so points H and J, are the points of tangency of AC and BC with the inner circle. But I haven't drawn the points of tangency of ZE and ZD with respect to the inner circle. They're really, really close, but I'm gonna draw them in now. So I'm gonna call them points F and G. Um, they're not the same points. So point G is where ZE is tangent to the inner circle. Point J is where CB is tangent to the inner circle. That's why I drew such a, an obtuse triangle, because if I drew an acute triangle, these points would be so close together, it would be hard to tell them apart. So now we can apply um, some similar triangles. So triangle ZGI is similar to triangle ZEM, uh, and, and similarly on the other side. So I'm gonna write this out. Um, so yeah, triangle ZIF is similar to triangle ZMD. Uh, that's because IF is perpendicular to ZD and MD is also perpendicular to ZD. So we have some ratios here we can work with. So ZF over ZD, uh, that's IF over MD, um, which are both just radii of those two circles. 
So IF is the same as IH and MD is the same as MA. And you'll see just, well, why in just a second I did that because the powers of Z with respect to these two circles are ZF and ZD. So, or, or I should say ZF squared and ZD squared. So if I square this, um, so first, so we have IH squared over MA squared. Uh, that's going to be Z uh, H squared over Z D squared. Um, so, so actually, this should be um, Z. I think this should be Z F squared over Z D squared. Yeah. So that's Z F squared over Z D squared, uh, which is the ratio of the powers of Z with respect to both circles. And that's the same as what we got for the ratio of the power of k with respect to both circles. So here's where we can apply the power ratio lemma. So I'm going to put a link to it in the description of my video. Um, but that means that z k z k x y has to be cyclic um, because the two circles omega and a i b uh, they both pass through x and y. And so since z and k have the same ratio of powers of those two circles. Z, K, X, Y has to be cyclic. So I'm going to draw that circle, but the problem statement says that we want to show that circle is tangent to the circumcircle of ABC. So it looks tangent, um, but we have to actually prove that K is that point of tangency. And so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, so uh, one way to show two circles are tangent is to take the tangent line to one and show that it's also the tangent line to the other. Uh, so that's going to be my strategy here. I'm going to draw the tangent line to the circle ABC at K, and I'm going to show that's also the tangent line to the other circle, KZ uh, or ZKXY. So I'm going to draw that tangent line. But before I do that, I'm going to note one thing. So it actually turns out that K, L, and M are collinear. So I mentioned this in my video on the Sharky Devil configuration. Um, so that's video 104. Uh, it's, the proof is a little bit of an angle chase. It's not that easy, but also not that hard. Uh, but I just didn't want to write it out again here. So it turns out by that property of the Sharky Devil point, which is point K, we actually have that K, L, and M are collinear. So I'm going to draw in that segment, which I'm going to use in just a second. And now I'm going to draw the tangent line to the circumcircle of ABC at point K. All right. So, and I'm going to let it intersect AB. So you'll see in just a second. Um, so I drew this tangent line. I only drew one side of it. But I drew the tangent line at point K. And it intersects uh, the line AB at point N. And I actually claim that triangle KNL uh, is an isosceles triangle. So this is actually somewhat of a well-known fact, although I'm going to prove it. But since KM uh, is an angle bisector of angle AKB, uh, it turns out that if you construct point N in this way, uh, you always have that triangle NKL uh, is isosceles. That's kind of a well-known fact. But I'm going to prove it out for you here uh, if you haven't seen it. So uh, it's just an angle chase. Uh, so we have angle NKL. Uh, it's equal to angle NKM using this Sharpie double property. And angle NKM, it's half of arc KM, which is half of arc KA plus arc AM. And arc AM is equal to arc MB, since M is the midpoint of arc AB. So this is half of arc KA plus arc MB. And this is half of two arcs, so it's the angle between the chords between them. So I've mentioned this a couple times in my channel. So this is equal to angle NLK, um, because that angle NLK, uh, that's the angle between these two chords, AB and KM. So it has to be half those two intercepted arcs. So, okay, so we have angle NKL is equal to angle NLK. And now, if we apply power of a point just a couple of times, this is enough to finish off the problem. So, so here's how I'm going to do it. Um, I'm actually going to show that N, X, and Y are collinear, 
um, by showing that n is the same power with respect to omega and the circumcircle through aib. So I'm going to do a couple power of a points here. So let me write it out. So we have the power of n with respect to omega. So that's the n circle. Uh, that's nl squared, obviously, because nl is tangent to the circle. But nl is equal to nk, because I just proved that uh, triangle nlk is isosceles. So nl squared is equal to nk squared. Uh, but nk, we define it to be tangent to the circumcircle of ABC. So nk squared is na times nb. And na times nb is also the power of n with respect to the circle through ai and b. So n has the same power with respect to omega and aib, so it has to lie on their radical axis, which is xy. So I'm going to write that out. So since n lies on the radical axis of omega and the circle through a, i, and b, that means n, x, and y have to be collinear. And once we know that, it's a fairly straightforward uh, power of a point again uh, to show that n, k is not just tangent to the circumcircle of a, b, c, but also tangent to the circle through x, y, and z. Uh, so I'm going to write that out right now. Uh, so we have n, k squared. Uh, it's equal to, uh, this should be Na times Nb, not Na times Na. Um, and it's also equal to uh, Nx times Ny, because Na times Nb is Nx times Ny by power of a point. And so that means Nk is tangent to both the circumcircle of ABC and uh, ZKXY, since we have Nk squared is Nx times Ny. Uh, so, so let me change this here, just um, it's bugging me. All right, so I just fixed it. And if we know that nk is tangent to both of those two circles, then that means, and I'm going to write it out here, uh, that means that, whoops, the circumcircles of uh, triangle XYZ and triangle ABC are tangent. All right, so you got a little peek of, of how I use um, the text editor in GeoGebra, and that is the final um, line. So this problem, a lot trickier than it looks, um, and my construction of the point K isn't super motivated, so I kind of had to work backwards to figure out this point K. Um, but a very awesome problem. And there's a lot of other solutions on the AOPS forum using inversion. So you can check those out too if, you, if you'd like. Um, so thanks everyone for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. And like I mentioned, I'm going to post another video soon on new things I'm thinking about doing for my channel. So again, thanks for watching and have a good rest of your day. Thanks everyone.